Father in heaven, as we study the incarnation of Christ, help us to appreciate the gift of heaven just a little more. Amen. The music was softer than usual, about a third softer than usual. You see, the choir master and a third of the choir were absent. They were there was pain in the hearts of angels. What are we talking about? For the very first time, the mysterious, painful phenomenon of sin was felt in heaven. The masterpiece of God's creation called Lucifer rebelled and left. So the music was softer. Have you experienced the pain of rejection when a very dear loved one becomes your greatest enemy? That happens. God loved Lucifer because he made him. Oh, what pain to see him going. There are different levels of hurt, but rejection is one of the most painful. Somebody just pushes you out of her or, he, or his life. When Lucifer and his followers left heaven, God experienced rejection at its most painful level. Lucifer managed to persuade a third of the heavenly population to reject God. Have you ever thought of his pain? God was weeping in painful humiliation when they left the choir sang softer. When our Saviour was challenged to prove his love for rebels, he left his glory behind, became a man, and died in agony on a cross. This is his weapon. Divorce decree. God was there when you got divorced. He knows your pain. He understands. On that lonely Sabbath in heaven, God felt the pain of all the forsaken and all the deserted. The music was softer. Does he still experience that pain? We're having a look into the heart of God today. It is quite possible that the following hymn was sung on that dreary, lonely Sabbath in heaven. Isaiah 14, 6 to 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? What a sad hymn. He was the choir master. Divine love never hates. Divine love only experiences pain. This is new excavations at the city of David. Archaeologists are busy discovering the palace of David. And this is the Kidron Valley. You're looking at a monument. This is a monument built by Absalom for himself. He had no children. He was the most beautiful son of David. Many centuries later, another father sang another similar song on the theme of rejection. When Absalom rebelled, David experienced God's pain when his son Lucifer rebelled against him. David descended these steps when he fled from his son Absalom. Bare feet he walked up the Mount of Olives, full of pain. Second Samuel 18.33 says, Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he wept, he said thus, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, and then these words, 
If only I had died in your place. O Absalom, my son, my son. Can you appreciate an earthly father's heart full of love for the son that wants to kill him? Can you hear the sobs coming from a crushed, painful father's heart? He cries a similar cry to the one he cried when another Absalom called Lucifer rebelled against him. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. I wish we could get DVDs one day to, to look at these great events. And as he went, he said thus, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. I remember the time when I spoke to the mother whose son was a criminal. He was a bad fellow. Guess in what kind of emotional tone she spoke of him. It's a dear boy, a child so precious to her. It takes much less energy to pity than to hate. Have you tried your best to reconcile, but failed? To a limited degree, one experiences God's pain of rejection when Lucifer falsely accused him and refused to reconcile. Only one day in heaven will we learn more about God's pain when his own rejected him. Is it possible that you are experiencing the pain of rejection this very moment? God knows exactly how you feel. Maybe you've tried to reconcile with someone but failed miserably. Take heart. God could not change Lucifer's rebellious heart. Neither could David change Absalom's rebellious heart. Bury your small pain of rejection in God's larger pain of rejection. He alone can prevent your pain from turning into bitterness. Hurt goes over into bitterness. Ask God to help you not to, not to become bitter, but to pray for the one who rejected you. What else caused additional pain to God when he had to announce the fall of Adam and Eve? Wow. The great rebel tempted the first two people on this planet to rebel against the loving God who created him. What humiliation, what pain. Two sinless friends of God lost their cover of innocence and covered themselves with thick leaves of rebellion. And God looked at this. Can you imagine his pain? Angels saw the pain in God's eyes. Maybe one of the angels said, destroy Satan and his rebellious followers and start all over again. Fortunately, God decided to rather die than destroy. His weapon is the cross. A weapon that destroys and saves. In order to give Adam and Eve the opportunity to be saved, something dramatic had to be done. God had to become man, descend to this rebellious earth. Wow. God, the creator, had to become a created and descend to this rebellious planet. The angels were shocked. Must God empty himself of his glory and accept the law, the lower state status of man, in order to save him? The creator of the cosmos 
was to become a creature. Can you imagine you creating something and becoming that something? God was not going to enter a body like that of Adam before or even after his fall. He was going to get an inferior human body after 4,000 years of deterioration since the fall. Weeping angels beheld the the deterioration of the human race going down. It was pathetic. After 2,000 years, they saw the destruction of the wicked race by water and God crying. I took this picture at Capernaum, the synagogue of Capernaum, and I asked these tourists traveling with me to just do a little skid. What happened in the synagogue at Capernaum? Jesus healed a demon-possessed person. He healed many, but he healed one specific one on this specific Sabbath. Demons started possessing mankind. If you look at a graph of how the, the planet became more wicked, when Christ came here, the planet was at its lowest. It was the darkest period in the history of our world. It was 4 BC. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead, was about to be incarnated, becoming human. The painful process of the incarnation was revealed to the angels. While Satan rejoiced, this was the saddest moment in the lives of angels and the Father. He was to be there in heaven no more. As they greeted Jesus, they realized that they would never, never, never again see him as they saw him at that moment. And then he disappeared. Their perfect champion was to come back with permanent human scars. He did a lot for us. He who spoke the galaxies into existence was going to humiliate himself by becoming lower than the angels. Lower than Adam in his sinless state. Lower than Adam immediately after his fall. He was to become one with a pathetic race of a broken, sin-infested planet. Philippians 2, 5 and 6. This is the challenge. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. You know, we love reputations. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of of a servant, and was made in the likeness, in the likeness of men. God made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death, shameful death of the cross. This is Saddam Hussein. I once saw him when I visited Iraq. It's humiliating and painful for anyone to step down. We want to get promotion, not demotion. But when Jesus emptied himself of his divine glory and entered the human form, it was humiliation, stepping down, beyond description or comprehension. Christ, at an infinite cost, by a painful process, mysterious to angels as well as to men, assumed humanity, hiding his divinity, laying aside his glory, 
He was born as a babe in Bethlehem. Silent night, holy night. I tried to anticipate the pain when she would eventually leave our home, our only child. What are these suitcases telling you? She was leaving home. My child left a place of safety and love and entered a world of pain and dangers. You've had that experience, some of you. Our home was painfully empty except for a few memories of our little sweetheart. She would never come back the way she left home. When Jesus left heaven, he left his glory behind. Heaven was tear-filled empty. The beloved champion was gone, undertaking the most dangerous journey in the history of the universe for you and for me. How would you handle an official visit from the president of America? I don't know how big your house is, but how would you handle an official visit from the president of America? How would you accommodate the hundreds of reporters from around the world, CNN and many others, BBC, Al Jazeera? How would you accommodate the president's Entourage. Where will all the officials' limousines park? Do you have a lot of parking around your house? What about the thousand FBI's? Where will everybody be seated? You do not have the psychological makeup or the logistics to handle an official visit from the mighty, glorious president of the USA. There is only one way in which you will be able to handle a visit from the president of the greatest nation on the face of the planet. Guess how will you be able to handle his visit? He will have to come unofficially on a bicycle, dressed in a denim, a t-shirt and cheap suits, shoes. If he tells you that the SA passengers, say for instance, this is South Africa, we've got passengers in the taxi robbed him of his money and stabbed him with a knife, you will really feel at home with the president. Now this is our South African situation and if we have Afri South Africans looking at this, they will know what I'm talking. We're doing well with uh, crime in our country. Would his humble, unofficial visit detract from his status? No, he is still the president of the greatest country in the world. This is Andromeda, the galaxy of Andromeda. In what manner did the creator of the universe come to our planet? How would an official glorious visit affect us? You're looking at the Hilton in Jerusalem. Where did he lodge? At the best hotel when he came? No. In the Hiltons of his day? No. 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 This is a Typical modern squatter's camp in my country, South Africa. Jesus lived in a kind of squatter's camp next to the township of Nazareth. Humiliating. Terribly. Christ came from illimitable space and indescribable light to the darkness of this planet and the darkness of our hearts. He came to limited space and darkness of a young orphan's womb called Mary. The study of the incarnation of Christ will employ the mind of the diligent students as long as time shall last. 
and looking to heaven with its unnumbered years, he will exclaim, Great is the mystery of godliness. This is Shepherd's Fields in Bethlehem. Luke 2 verse 12 says, And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What does archaeology tell us about this description? She wraps the incarnate God in funeral cloth. When people went on a long journey, they took funeral cloth. Should they die to be buried in a cloth? And the Prince of Life was wrapped in funeral cloth. That's not all. You're looking at the picture I took at Dominus Flevit. There's not much difference between an ossuary, a little uh, tomb, and, uh, and a manger. About the same thing. First Timothy, Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He, the God of the universe, appeared in a body. No gynecologist to assist with the birth, while the God-child cries, weeps a cow bellows. No baby powder, the smell of fresh cow manure fills the stable. This is the traditional birthplace of Christ in Bethlehem. And this is a manger. I took this picture at um, Jericho. But a manger and an ossuary, a tomb, looks the same. Two symbols of death when he came into this world. He was going to die for you and me. God placed his son in the crib of the world. He invites you and me to come and get nourished from the bread of life that came down from heaven. How did the angels react when they saw the omnipotent God of thunder becoming a baby and crying in a stable? How wide is the contrast between the divinity of Christ and the helpless infant in Bethlehem's manger. How can we span the distance between the mighty God and a helpless child far higher than any of the angels, equal with a father in dignity and glory, and yet wearing the garb of humanity? Can you grasp this in order to save you and me? Divinity and humanity were mysteriously combined and man and God became one. John dips his pen in the ink pot and pen these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the wor Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Pros thon theon, equal with God in every respect with a father and the word was made flesh the logos God and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten full uh, begotten of the father and listen to these words 
full of grace and truth. This is His glory, full of grace and full of truth, a gift from God to you and me. Can you comprehend it? The glory of God lies in His incarnation, becoming flesh like you and me. We've got a friend in heaven. He's called Jesus Christ. He came down to where I am. He felt my hunger, physically and spiritually, and my thirst, physically and psychologically. He tasted my pain, physically and mentally, and the depression. He even experienced my guilt, my friend. He knows you intimately in your pain, frustration, rejection, whatever negative emotion you are experiencing, he knows about this. We serve a wonderful God. What overflowing grace that he might accomplish his purpose of love for the fallen race. He became bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. Does Jesus deserve our daily consecration and gratitude? Father in heaven, thank you for coming down to us and experience what we experience. And help us in this lecture to appreciate your love for us just a little more. In Jesus' name. Amen.